Hello, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Mel and the Nostalgic Runner. And um, this is the Get Fit With Me series presents accountability. And this week was a little bit different than the other ones I've done, where I literally go over my half marathon training. And this was week three. And for those, um, I'm going to give you a heads up. I did chronicle the week a little bit more. So this was a little bit more um, documentary style this week. Um, and you'll find out why <laughs> shortly, but, um, also the other reason why I wanted to do it this way is I actually had a race that I did yesterday. And, um, first let's go into all the things leading up into that. And then from there, I will then present how the race went and all that good stuff. So enjoy <laughs> child. For those who can see my face, you probably already can figure out I am so sick right now. <laughs> I do not feel well. Um, I actually called in today, um, which I don't like having to do that. But it was one of those things where it's like, look, I'm not going to push through for work, especially knowing the end is near. Um I don't, I only have eight days left <laughs> and yes, I've been counting it down, but I think that's also not helping with my sleep because I'm just thinking about it constantly. And it's one of those things where I wish I could turn off my passion for life. Cause for those who haven't figured out who know me very well, y'all know I'm a very passionate person. I am not someone that half, half does anything. I don't know how to do that. Either I care or I don't. There's literally no happy medium. <laughs> and with this weird thing I got going on, I care because I care about the others that were impacted by this, who I've worked with for hell. Some of these people I worked for for or worked with for my whole entire career. And I've been with the company for 11 years. Um, so I basically don't want to screw them over. <clears throat> But the other part of me is like, I'm here so I don't get fined. <laughs> I'm literally on my Marshawn Lynch because, you know, I have the um, golden ticket being waved at me um, to be able to sit down <laughs> and be okay sitting down, basically. Um, so anyway... Yeah, I, w I woke up today feeling worse than ever, but the thing is I felt this way since yesterday, and I had actually um, pushed through yesterday because the only thing that was bothering me yesterday is that I had a sore throat. That was it. I just had a sore throat, and I should have known with that sore throat things were going to get worse, and of course it did. I should have went on my lunch break yesterday with a mask on. I should have went to the store, get me some throat lozenges, and call it good because when I tell you when I got off work, it got much worse. It did. Um, cause I was going to work out after work. Like I always do. I did not. Um, that's when the congestion stuff started to happen. And then I was cold, even though it was warm outside yesterday. It was like in almost in the sixties, but I was cold. I was cold, which tells me, okay, you, you have a fever. Okay, cool. Um, cool, cool, cool. Not really. Not cool at all. Um, <laughs> clearly. So then I tried to go to sleep um, early. Didn't happen. Um, I just kept tossing and turning the whole entire night. And around 2.30 when I was getting sick of fighting my covers, because <laughs> that's literally what I was doing. And poor Whisper, she was like trying to be there for me. And she still is there for me right now. Look at her. She's always there for me. Um, she was like, I'll try to keep you warm. <laughs> it was not working. <laughs> and she, I, I don't think she even got the best sleep either. Because um, for those who don't know, Whisper, this is my shadow. She goes everywhere I go. Like, she's my partner in crime. Um, anyway, while Zero's kind of the more independent cat, he's actually probably in my bed sleeping right now because I'm not in my bed. Um, anyway, so... <sighs> around 3.30, almost 4 o'clock, I'm just like, okay. 
work is going to happen. I'm not even going to try it. Um, so I sent the email, moved some meetings around, did all that. So I was like, yeah, I'm not working today. So I did not work today. Um, and I basically just been lying down all day, trying to rest, trying to see if I can get to the gym today. Cause I'm that kind of crazy where I still want to try to go to the gym. I'm not going to go to the gym. I'm, I'm clearly sick. That's not. No, (laughs) you know, that's not the answer. So the four days of the gym this week is not going to happen. And I think that's the other reason why my, the the weird obsessive side of my seeing things through really wanted to do that. And it's like, no, you can't risk getting other people sick because you want to go to the gym. And also it wouldn't have been a quality workout. It would have felt good to sweat, but it would not be a quality workout. So I am going to try to go for a run outside to see how I feel because with that, I can at least avoid people. Um, that was one of those things during like 2020. That was my favorite part of 2020, to be honest with you, was being able to run outside and no one be around. <laughs> Cause, um, it was like, it was probably the safest way of exercising at that time because no one was outside other than other runners. And then people, and then you would just do like a salute, <laughs> like from a distance, like, <laughs> and it was great. But anyway, so I am going to maybe try to see if I can go for a run outside, see how I feel. I'm debating it though, because I still feel like I have a slight temperature. Um, because again, it feels, I feel warm, really warm. And then I feel really cold. Like there's no, I don't feel comfortable (laughs) and I haven't this whole entire time. So yeah, if I don't run today, the five days is gone too. Um, and I don't even know how the five days is going to work because that means it's going to be back to back to back to back to back. And for those who know, I, I haven't been able to do back to backs like five days in a row of running, um, it's been 10 years since I've done something like that and it's not an ideal or smart thing to do. So I, I might not even try it. Um, so I think I might just go for a walk to see how I feel. Um, because unfortunately I do still need to go to the store cause I need to get some throat lozenges to make my, get myself feeling better. So I'm probably going to, so because I'm going to go to the store, I'm going to wear a mask. Um, cause I just don't want to get other people sick, you know, it's decency. But anyway, I know I'm dragging this along a little bit, but um, I have a race on Sunday. So that's the other reason why I really don't want to overly push and see it through because I do have a race on Sunday. And I am going to highlight and try to like give, I'm, I want you to see what, what all that is about. Um, I'm going to try to like blur out numbers or whatever because I think there's a way where you could look up things. And I don't want y'all to do that. But anyway, we're going to do that. Um... I think I'm going to try to go to get my packet either Friday or Saturday and the race is on Sunday. Anyway, that does conclude the Get Fit With Me. Um, that's pretty much it for now. Hey, so it's actually nice and sunny out, but it's actually really, really chilly. It's like in the 30s and I probably should have wore a, wore a coat, but I was like, eh, I'm not going to be outside that long. And I need to get used to how this feels for tomorrow for running since I haven't really ran outside at all the this week but yeah um finally getting my packet for packet pickups and it's at Bunkingham Fountain and for those who are not as familiar with Chicago this is what that looks like that's sorry don't mind my finger and the guy who just got my way (laughs) but yeah and there's flags everywhere because Bank of America is a sponsor that is um this is one of the this is a race where they actually used to not have the pack packet pick up here they used to have it at um like a venue like a convention center called mccormick's but ever since really 2020 well really 2021 because they didn't have it in 2020 for obvious reasons um they have had it outside and they've kept it this way and i actually like it more um <laughs> Minus today, <laughs> I made the cardinal mistake of today of, uh, I wait till last minute to get my packet and 
one of the main reasons why you don't wait till last minute is because traffic is a nightmare anywhere near this area around this time. But yeah, anyway, later. So this is a little bit of what all looks like. Like there's some things to sell you, but eh, not really interested. But I already have the bag with my bib. Um, and now I'm on my way to get my shirt. And then I'm out of here. I don't really stick around too much anymore for the other stuff because I kind of don't care. But <laughs> yeah, in and out. Almost done. Okay, so I did the race yesterday and <laughs> a lot of bloopers happened. So for one, I forgot my watch. So because I did not have my watch, that times me. I'm not going to lie, my head was not in the right space pretty much the most of the day after that. I was kind of just annoyed because I didn't know how well I did other than looking on the website. And for me, I don't like that. I like to know what I did versus what the website tells me because for those who are not aware, for those who are new to running, most races, especially if they're certified courses, and this is one of those major races that a lot of people do, um, including some professional athletes do it. Um, the race usually is going to be marked longer if you're not taking like the actual direct path um, to like the 8K. So let's say you're someone who takes corners widely, you're going to get more on your watch than you would if you were like literally going perfectly. So with that being said, I like to have both times of what I have on my watch and then what I also have like on the website for that reason. And I didn't really have that. So I, right then there, I kind of was thinking, man, I don't even know what I did. Um, I did find out looking at last year's results, I was three minutes slower. But I wasn't that surprised by that. And I'm glad it was only about three minutes slower because for if you have saw just a little bit ago, I... Um, yeah, I was sick most of last week and it had to do with like sciences and congestion and which doesn't really work with running. <laughs> so I wasn't really able to run. And as you could probably hear even in my voice a little bit, I'm not really sick anymore, but I still have this lingering cough. And so it made the run really not so bad, but it just made it where I just fell out of practice. Like I wasn't really... Because I haven't been running. So that's one thing. Other than that, the race itself was okay. Other than it was really cold. It was a, one of those weird mornings. It was typical Chicago spring where it's not spring weather yet, but it's not really winter weather anymore. Like it can't make up its mind. So it was one of those things like it's too hot to dress like it's winter, but it's too cold to just be outside waiting for the race to start and I had to just be outside waiting for the race to start because with the major races they start in waves and I was in wave two and so I was there earlier on with my the rest of my group and a lot of the people in my group are faster than me so a lot of people in my group were in wave one and we did like a group picture before the race and so they went off their business and did their thing but because I'm waiting another hour outside and there's really nowhere else to wait besides outside because it's at a park. Now, I didn't realize until now, I forgot to take my allergy medicine this morning. I was like, why is my nose itching out of nowhere? But anyway, sorry. Um, but um, yeah, so there's really nowhere else to wait besides like outside because the race is in Grant Park. And for those who are not familiar, that is like the major park that's right in the middle of the loop. For those who are not from Chicago, downtown, I'll call it downtown because a lot of people don't understand what the loop is. And we, instead of us calling it downtown, we call it the loop. We'll say like the north loop, north of like no, north of the loop, the loop, west loop, south loop. 
like we don't really say north loop. We say north of the loop because it's either you're north of the loop or you're in the loop or you're south loop or you're west loop. Anyway, but the point is this race was in the loop and like kind of the heart of like the downtown area for those who are not familiar. But it's, so the course running all throughout downtown or through the loop. Um, but it's just the loop. We don't go to the West Loop, which is another neighborhood. And we don't go to the South Loop, which is technically another layer neighborhood. Um, and the names of the neighborhood are pretty self-explanatory. West of the Loop, South Loop. It's the southern part of the loop. West part of the loop. <laughs> anyway, but the... So, with that being said, there really wasn't anywhere to be waiting and like... Um, for the race to start and it was cold and I already checked my bags, you know, did the gear check. Cause I was wearing, of course I was wearing, I was dressed appropriately before my race started, but you know, once the race starts, I'm wearing like less clothes because I don't want to sweat out my clothes. And also I don't want to be too hot during the run because whenever you run, you need to add um, 20, 20 degrees to whatever the weather is outside. So for example, if it is in the late, the mid, if it's in the upper thirties, like 38, when you're running, it's fit, it feels like it's 58 and so forth. So I was dressed just fine for the race. If the race was started right when I like took the clothes off, but it didn't. So I'm like freezing, waiting for this race to start. So about time the race started, I'm like kind of just like, oh my gosh, now I'm cold again. <laughs> um, so it took me about like a mile, I guess, or a mile and a half to get warmed up. I don't really know because again, I didn't have my watch. <laughs> and the other thing that was so, that I found a little bit annoying, but I didn't realize this before, is that I did not see um, I did not see, um, what was I going to mention? There was no mile marker for mile one. That's what I was going to say. There was no mile marker for mile one, which honestly, if I had my watch, it would have been annoying, but I wouldn't have cared. But because I didn't have my watch and also really having the watch the first two miles of the race to a certain degree doesn't really matter because you're running in the middle of like the loop with the tall building. So your GPS is going to be all kinds of messed up anyway, but you can at least kind of gauge, um, based off of like, you can't go off pace, but you can at least go off of like a time, how much time has passed to know how well you're doing. Um, because that is another thing that I always tell people who ever come here to visit, if they're doing a downtown race or race anywhere in the loop, is not like on the lake shore. They need to go by the time that's passed on the race and not the pace because the tall buildings mess the whole thing up. Um, regardless if you live here or not, it doesn't matter. Like the, it, there's skyscrapers everywhere. So there's, it, you're not going to get the right time. But anyway, because of that, I, I thought the mile was the longest mile of my life. And then I realized, and then I saw the two mile marker. I was like, oh, it's because it was a mile two. <laughs> So I was like, okay, I'm in all right shape. I just thought it was going to be much worse. And so for the most part, the race was a fun race. I took it easy, but because I didn't really know how fast I was going, it kind of made it where I couldn't know if I was going to beat my time or not because I didn't really know how fast I was going. So that was kind of the only downer. And I feel like honestly, if I would have my watch, I would have tried to at least beat last year's time, but that's okay. Um, but then afterwards we had our festivities where we basically hung out. Um, at, so I'm part of a beer running club. And so we did this beer sharing thing. Um, and it was really cool. And this time, because I was recovering from a little bit of a bug, I did not do too much. I literally had probably like, um, about this size in a cup, like a regular size cup of like five different beverages just to try it. Um, and mainly like stouts because I just wanted to try them because people had a whole bunch of different flavor stouts and that was kind of cool. 
And then because it was cold, I was like, yeah, where are we going for food? (laughs) I'm like, this is fun and all, but I'm ready for the food. And I think, and I feel bad because one of my friends thought I was just in a weird mood. And I I kind of, maybe I was, but I don't think I was. I think part of it is I'm just not really on that kind of time of drinking a lot. I really just was like, okay, we did that. But now I'm really, really cold. I'm really, really hungry. Where is the food? (laughs) Because in the past, we like were able to stay out longer because it wasn't as cold. This year, it was cold outside. Like it kind of was not that enjoyable for me because honestly, I hate being cold. I cannot stand being cold. And I've also have a history where I've gotten hyperthermia before. Yeah, running related. Yeah, don't judge me. Um, I know you guys already are, but the point is I've had a history of that before. So I should not be outside in cold weather because once that happens to you, it's really easy for it to happen to you again, given it has now been almost eight years. That was eight years ago. So I should be okay, but still, I really don't want to chance it. So I'm glad the leader of our group was like, yes, we're going to... Bitter Pops, um, which is a place on the north side. So I was like, thank God. It's also on the north side, too. Thank you. And so it was. And so we went ahead. Uh, the group of us who were on the same kind of time, like, look, we need food and we're cold. <laughs> which was like seven of us. We we're like, and we're out. We sk- skedaddled out of there as quickly as possible and got to Bitter Pops. And then I had a change of clothes in my bag also. So I went ahead and changed my clothes so I wasn't still in like my wet running clothes. And then I ordered food immediately. And that's another thing that's cool about this place called Bitter Pops. They do have beverages, of course, but they also have really fast like food. Um, Cause it is like fast food, style food, but, and honestly, I haven't had like a cheat meal since last week I do try to do cheat meal but like at least once a week so I was like okay yeah cool I'm gonna have this and it's gonna be fine so I had like a a impossible smash burger with fries the fry serving was ridiculous I actually took some of that home and like heated up in my air fryer for dinner because it was just it was the, the portion was ridiculous but anyway I was able to eat and then socialize my friends and then I was home by like And then I relaxed for the rest of the evening. It was wonderful. (laughs) So, but yeah, it was a good day. But besides that, yeah, as you can see, my training did not do what I needed to do. But today's a new day. Today's Monday. And we're going to get right back to it. I think I'm I'm recovered enough where I could go back to the gym. Because also, too, I didn't make it to the gym at all last week. And I only ran Sunday. But this week, we're going to get back to the schedule. And it'll be fine. Anyway, but that does conclude the video. Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melanin Nostalgic Runner. And I will see you next time. Bye.